Hey, Somerville, Somerville, Somerville. We are here at SCAT. Oh, yes, Art at SCAT. Isn't that the moment? Yes, we are here today to welcome another Somerville talented artist and another brave soul who took my phone call and said, and I said, I love your work, <laughs> or, or my emails, or, you know, it's just wonderful. Mara Callahan, beautiful work, love the palette. Um, everything about your work that I saw on your website was fabulous. So welcome. Thank you. You've got to be the most like chill person, and your <laughs> art is just so. It's just I love it. So thank you. Thank you. And um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so I went to I studied art, of course, in school, and then I stopped for a while and I went into graphic design. And I really missed working with my hands, and so I started painting again, and I've been taking classes at the museum school and different workshops around Boston. And a uh, big breakthrough was my monotype workshop with Joel Janowitz, who I adore. And this is where I learned this technique. <coughs> okay, and uh, monoprint, so just so the audience knows, you're going to go into it a little bit more. Yeah. But it's a, it's a method of printing. Yes. And um, it's not your traditional carving through or um, yeah, carving through the images or anything? No, it's, it's more, I'm working on plexiglass. It's basically a, a painting that I, that I do on the plexiglass and then I transfer it through the you know, roller press onto paper. And you might ask why you, you do that, but it's actually so fun and it's very addictive. And um, it allows you a lot of freedom. And it's not quite as intimidating as painting on canvas. You know, you can wipe things away. You can, you know, roll over things. It's very fluid. And well, my, my thing with that, though, is oh, it's always so um, unique. Each one is Each one unique. is unique. Yeah, it's a so unique print. Each time. So plexiglass would be like the glass sometimes used in a frame. Yes. Right? And so the audience will know. Yeah. And then you are then taking the rollers and the palette Yep. And creating a pal uh, colors and uh, then putting it through the press. Yeah. This is different than the traditional printmaking that we usually think about with the carving and the etching. Oh, yeah, 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 woodcuts and yeah, yeah. it's a different, different technique. Though you can do monotypes with those also. Oh, okay. Yeah, monotype just really means unique print. So, but um, I really, really love it. And, and tell us the subject matter, please. So <clears throat> this was an exercise in trying to get those beautiful neutrals. You know, I'm good with color, but I really wanted to work on those beautiful grays and, you know, olive greens that really bring out the other colors. And so these are beach rocks that I collected. And um, I use a viscosity technique, which is, you know, mixing thick and thin inks. So sometimes I'll put down some thinner ink and I'll go over it with a thick ink and get this beautiful texture that helps create the, the rocks. And when you come to see um, Mara's work, yeah. you'll notice that you'll, you'll see depth so that you feel like you can actually touch and, and go in between the crevices, the way the colors go and the uh, lights, how you form the shape so that you can like feel like your hand is going over and under and weaving through. It's absolutely wonderful. Oh, well, thank you. And I hear I kind of blurred things to you know feel as if we're some of the rocks are underwater. And uh, should we move to the next one? I just wanted to point out, if I could, yeah. that this the whites, the way it comes through, it's like bubbles, yeah. and they just seem to float. And it, it almost has an, uh, a galactic look too of, <laughs> of space travel. Yeah. which I really enjoy. But yes, we can move on to that. Yeah, there's a lot of happy accidents. That I think I had dusted my rollers with cornstarch to keep them, you know, uh, to keep to keep them when I wasn't using them and then when I rolled on the paint it it left it behind and I was just like, "Oh, water, you know, air bubbles." And it's so many things like that happen with printmaking. With all oh, art. With all art, really. Yeah, because and you, you got to respond to it. you got to be aware and, go and not just keep going. Like, oh, I don't like that. I was like, oh, that's, be that's beautiful. Well, don't throw it away. Yeah. You know, even if you put it aside and come back to it, you'll find another place for it. Exactly. Because exactly. that's the beauty of this. It's, it, it's just, it's so fluid. Yeah. All right, so we're going to look at the next one, because then you'll understand why this, okay. why I might be painting on plexi. Exactly. <laughs> So, oh, 
Well, you know what? Should we here, pass it off? Pass it over here. So with the monotypes, after you print the initial image, you have the ghost image. And that's where the real fun starts. Because if you remember from the previous image, there was a blue rock up there. Now that's sort of a ghostly image in the back. There was this you know, green rock, sort of moss covered. And now it's just a ghost of it. And it, when you start painting other rocks on top, suddenly we're really in the water. And just to explain, the ghost is what's left of the ink that's on the paper. Yeah. So if you notice, if you remember from before, and when you come to the show, you'll be able to see the, um, the level of uh, intensity of the color because it's been taken up by the print, and then you just keep going. And that's where you get the wonderful, we call them ghost, but they're not like Casper or anything <laughs> like that. Um, and you get these other images that uh, it just keeps going. It's yeah. like a perpetual story. Yeah. They're very evocative. I really love working with the ghost image. And this image through here. Yeah. And I almost see a face in here. Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes that's like, oh, is it a turtle? <laughs> you know? Um, you do see all kinds of things in them. That's, that's a, the fun of it. Now, how did you decide on your subject matter? You're a nat you do a lot of nature. It just flora, speaks to me. Flora. You know, I just, I'm just fascinated. I mean, even these little rocks when I'm out walking, I'm just noticing all these little details and, you know, collecting things all the time. So and there's another thing, the pack ratism of it all. <laughs> yes. We, we all have our collections of things that inspire us. Yeah. And I love the idea that you have rocks. <laughs> Big bags of heavy rocks. <laughs> I have a friend, uh, Kathy Gregory, and yeah. she collects pieces of uh, metal. Mm -hmm. And then they, they all kinds of like, uh, what do you call it, rusty metal. Yeah. And she just keeps it. See, so we all keep these things. And then we, and she just keeps creating sculptures with them. Oh, that's and then beautiful. She and she's been on the show. And yeah. your work, the palettes are very similar, though um, hers are man, well, man, person made. Mm -hmm. I want to say that, not man made, person made. And um, yours are nature made and quite beautiful. How long does it take you to do monoprint? Um, I would say, you'd be surprised, but this was probably a few hours. Though I think if it was a painting, it would have taken me a lot longer. But there's something, again, about sort of responding to the ghost, having something to work off, and that's the way I like to work. And things move quickly. It's very spontaneous. Yeah, I try and keep it fresh, you know. Uh, do you spin it around, too, to see the different angles? I know some artists do that, like, or you set in one perspective, because sometimes people tell you to flip and to go turn it mm, upside down. And not usually, but I do hit in on the wall and give it a good look, you know? I could just pin it up there, look at it for a little bit, and, you know, think about, gee, what do I like? What's working? What colors are, you know, like, this is just pretty beautiful, mm -hmm. you know? And I love this area. Yeah. Yeah, I love that area. And I feel like I can, I feel like it's not always my own doing. <laughs> like, they're all, like, all, all those happy accidents. So I'm sort of like, oh, wow, that's beautiful. And I didn't even mean that to happen. And it's kind of nice. It takes the pressure off. You know, and it makes <clears> you really value what is natural. Yeah. What is earth. Oh, yeah. And I keep, they keep saying, wake up Mother Earth. And I keep going, no, really let her rest. She's had a long day. <laughs> you know, but your work really honors what is Earth and, and, you know, what is nature. Oh, thank you. I really am thinking about it always when I'm doing, this kind of doing the work. Did you start in printmaking? Uh, no, painting. Okay. Yeah. And how did you make the transition now? What... Oh, I still paint. I still go back and forth. Oh, okay. Yeah, just kind of learning new skills to keep things fresh, and this is something that I'm really... Because really it into. is a different set of skills. It's a different view. Yeah, but it helps my painting, actually. I can, yeah, it I really does, that. you know, because you, like, you're trying to be spontaneous and react to what's happening, and now I try and bring that into my other work, and I feel like overall my work is not as, you know, labored as it was. Do you have to share a press? Uh, yes, but that's that's fine. You can. Okay. Yeah. Cause that, that can sometimes throw things because if you're working on a schedule and people have t they need their time on the press and it depends on the size of the press, 
Um, yeah. But you, I work at Mix It right here in Somerville. Oh, okay. So yeah, you and work that's great. It's a beautiful at the space. Center of printmaking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's right. a great place. Yeah. And that's right near. That's right near uh, Holland. No. Yeah, it's right in Davis Square. Davis Square. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is very special. Thank what will you. you do with your ghost? Will you frame it also? Or? Oh yeah, yeah. I just took it out so that we can really see it. Okay. It's yeah. beautiful. All right. Well, let's see. Do wanna oh, here's, here's one of my paintings. This is a watercolor. I did this for um, Somerville Open Studios. They had the donut show. And I decided to take a crack at painting donuts. And it was really fun. And I think I'm going to do a whole series on painted food. <laughs> you did a great job because I'm hungry. And it's just, they look beautiful. And I love the way you did the box, the challenge of the box. You have the depth. Um, and you've captured the surfaces of the donuts. And the nice thing about these donuts is they're fat free. <laughs> yes, you can just look. Just look and you're <laughs> not going to gain any weight or anything. Chris was working. looking at me like that was a bad joke, Janet. <laughs> bad, bad joke. Um, but I love too that you used a lavender or blue here and then this because it's watercolor. Right? Yeah, watercolor, yeah. And then you were very gentle here with the colors and then darkening it here because that's one of the things about watercolor it's to me very disciplined and can be unforgiving yes um, it, because you can't keep going over it and mm -hmm. over it and over it you have to be very precise just like with printmaking um, about where you're going to place the colors yeah because if you keep going over it it ruins the paper unless you can find something to do with the paper it, it can really throw things off yeah yeah you have to you have to, there are, you know, a few little accidents that happen, but sometimes they're really beautiful. And, you know, I think this might have been a wash that got a little out of control, but it kind of looks like a shadow on the top of the box. It does. So, and, you know, you just got to stop yourself when you're like, I want to make it right. I want, the sh I want it to be, a, you know, one color. You got to let it go and just, you know, watch it and, and relax a little. And when you see this painting um, in the exhibit, one of the things you'll notice is the depth the way you use purples to, and browns to bring the viewer into what is the, um, the donuts and the circles and, and the, how they're placed in the box. And if anyone out there knows a donut shop <laughs> that needs uh, that special flair, <laughs> we have an artist that you can talk to. Okay. I'll paint their donuts. Their, oh, oh, okay. This was in the Union Square Donut Shop. For the for during the time of open studios, and I think someone told me the owner was sad when they took down the display because there were all these great, uh, all this great donut art. They had people made stained, there was stained glass donut donuts. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, they're beautiful, and I yes. like the color of the frame also because it, it. A lot of people just might put something in a brown or a neutral color. Yeah. But you owned it. Yeah, that'll be fun. Color. It's a fun painting. It's donuts, so I have fun with the framing. So let us take. Yep. Okay. And now we're back to the monotype. So I love all nature and I love animals. So this one is peacocks. This one's called the call of the peacocks. And I think it's sort of fun. Maybe that's the, the female up there. <laughs> and the male with his showy tail. And she's a ghost, looks like a ghost? Yeah, that's ghost a ghost, exactly. Image. Yeah, so I think I added this, this was the ghost, and I don't forget what I was here before. Um, and then I printed this, did this one. It's very reminiscent, too, of Japanese work. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the way <clears throat> that you've done the circles here on the, on the breast of the male, and then the color added to it. You know, I bought the peacock in a flea market. I think it's the, they're from India. I think it's what they used to stamp the fabric. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I used that and then I, I added the tail. So to and it's beautiful because it is um, the purple and the, the sort of mustard color. Yeah. Okay. Is, it brings out the, um, that male side. And then you have her, and I love it, it's sort of in a knowing 
posture, <laughs> um, looking down. Yeah. And she's very delicate and um, sort of um, buried in the mist. There's mm -hmm. a, a real mystique mm -hmm. about her. Also, the details that she did for the uh, plumage and for on the head, right? I don't know what you would call the wings, and that mm -hmm. one's the feathers there. It's beautiful. They look, um, oh my God, they're just so, I, I love them. Oh, I, I, thank I, I you. I love them. It reminds me, um, in a way, it's a little different, but in Latin America, they do butterfly art. And I don't know if you've ever seen it. No, they take I haven't. Monarch, they used to. It's against the law now. Yeah. But they use monarch butterfly wings to create scenarios. And they use this palette of monarch wings. And so you can see them, and they'll do whole trays. And they'll do, and then they paint black so that to um, give you the, the silhouette. Mm. so that you can see more of the image. But it can be anything from a ship to it. But if you ever look, mm. but you've captured sort of that wing, that butterfly wing delicacy I know, in your but work. Butterflies are on my list. I'm going to do a series of butterflies. I tried a while ago. Um, they didn't quite come out the way I wanted them to. So, but I've got some more skills under my belt, so I'm going to give it another shot. See, and that's They're just really beautiful. Determination, vision, mm -hmm. um, positive attitude. Playfulness, playfulness. Playfulness, yes. I was playing. I was playing. And, and sometimes I'm like, oh, it's working. Because <laughs> some yeah. people get grown up. And yeah. they get too grown up and they can't see the fluid, uh, fluidity mm -hmm. in, a, in a situation. And um, they get perfectionistic. Yeah. Just me. I'm talking about myself also, not just other people. But I find when I try and stay light and try and stay like, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just having fun. It, it actually turns out to be that way. And I have to tell you, when you, I don't do a lot of, I didn't do a lot of printmaking, I'm a painter. Yeah. But when I did, it's like this feeling of, you've lost control, because you, you really don't know how it's going to be. Yeah. But it's like, oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a great feeling. That is. When you're, when you're peeling it off and it, you're kind of looking like what you thought it might, it is very exciting. Because you, you just don't know. It's sometimes, it's the, some of the paint settles in a certain way and you go to pull it oh. and it's not what you expected. And you get a big smush. Yeah. And then you see the smush and it's like, oh, that's gorgeous. It looks like a jewel. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. This. How long does it take you to do um, a monoprint? Um, let me see. Now, that, had, that one I start was working off the ghost. So I feel, again, that this one I did in an, like in an afternoon. Okay. Yeah. And if we around. could, it's same palette, different perspective. If oh, yeah. we could go to the next. Oh, the, yeah, the trees. But okay. viewers, keep in mind, same palette she's using, and yet it's very interesting. Nothing is boring here. <laughs> <laughs> is it the same palette? That's interesting. You're right. It's very, lots of um, greens, and I do love this, like, spring green. Is this a print? Yep, these are monotypes also. So, okay. Yeah. And um, the sky, the layers of the sky. Yeah. So here I was using a stencil. Um, and what I was trying to get is the effect of, the, you know, the light, like just like outside the studio, of the light coming through the leaves. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, I really wanted it to have a light touch. And I think, I think I was successful. <laughs> I think you were. I'm pretty happy. Beautiful. They feel fresh, and I had them up in the spring for open studios. And I, I think I, there was a series, and I, there's five of them, and uh, I got a lot of really fun reactions. People were like, "Wow, you know, I feel like I'm outside," mm -hmm. or you really feel the light. So I, I, I felt really good about that. It sort of brought back memories too of when I first was introduced to printmaking in fifth grade. We used the potatoes. Yeah. And you carve the potatoes and then use that and put it there. And it's your, my grandmother never got over the fact we wasted potatoes, but <laughs> it was just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, those are gorgeous. Like, I save all my kids' artwork, and those are some of my favorites. And now they, like, sometimes they do their own little monotypes on styrofoam. Like, you know, but the yeah. hamburger comes in and they just sort of carve into it and they ink it up, and they're beautiful. Yeah. yeah. What? What kind of inspiration, what words of inspiration could you give someone out there who um, is thinking about or wants to, to enter this media? Oh, uh, I would say definitely give it a try and maybe emphasize the playfulness, you know? 
just have fun. You know, it's really um, exciting. Like when making. You, it's it's like a relaxing. Yeah. Have a lot of chocolate that day. Okay, have a lot of, and donuts. The sugar high is the one I, that I would recommend. <laughs> and then see what happens. Um, because there is playfulness, there's a lot of freedom mm -hmm. and movement in your work. So you can feel like air mm -hmm. is circulating in it. And it's a real gift to have in the way you've done the branches so that it's very um, carefully done as transparency. And leaving white space. Some people are afraid of white space. No, don't be afraid of white space. It's very you know, yeah. delicate. And um, I, you know, your work is inspiring. Every time I leave here, I always want to try something new. And it costs money, but it's just like, everyone, try it, try it, try it. And when you see her, just say, Mara, we saw your work, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's gorgeous. And yeah. um, anyone who's dealing with people who are having a hard time, this is the kind of art that would be great in an office for calming people down, um, where people are having a bad day. Um, I would think that your work would be the inspiration to bring all that tension down. And, and it gets people breathing, right? Crew, I got you. <laughs> Matt, Crystal is, well, Crystal's just smiling. So this is great. Um, I, your show will be for the month of September. And we are so glad to have you here. And you can also go to, your, your website will be listed um, on the SCAT website, and then you'll be able to see her other work, which is like mind-boggling also. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, uh, you, you bring, you're quiet, you're soft-spoken, and so is your work, but it says a lot, just like you do. Oh, oh thank you. That's a wonderful compliment. I would think you'd be a good teacher in uh, doing this. I know I, I haven't taught I haven't taught, but I would I would like to try sometime. Yeah, because y you have a forgiving soul, <laughs> and it's just that's that's what you need when you're teaching art, mm -hmm. because then it, the um, then it gives way to more experiments. Yeah, and I do. People are hard on themselves in work, different workshops. I'm like, I hear people, and I'm like, don't be so unkind to yourself. And then you get a couple of ringers in there that just want to be mean anyway and say <laughs> things. Uh, so, yeah. um, I find people are hardest on themselves, though, really. Way too hard. Sometimes their work is gorgeous and they're tearing it apart, and I'm like, what is going on? You know? So. But this is beautiful, and you're going to enjoy it when you walk in. And come in on a hot day because this will cool you down. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Plus, there's air conditioning. And so it's going to be like, come in here, and it's just absolutely going to just chill. That's all you're going to do. Have a bad day. Keep coming back to SCAT because we have long hours, too. So you can drop by and see this. So if you're having a bad day and you want to, uh, then you come in here and say, oh, yeah, they're still open till 9 or 10. Yeah, we can, we can stop in there and just, yeah, that's good. That's good. So um, I, I want to thank you for stopping in and bringing your work. Well, thank you for calling me and having me in. Yeah, it's always a surprise. Yeah, it was. Not Fun giving surprise. Money, but it's like, yeah, that's good. No, and, you know, wonderful guest, wonderful artist, and a wonderful camera crew. I might say Matt, Crystal, laughing at my jokes, well-timed. Crystal's like back there with the, with the board, keyboard. You can see how technical I am. And she's, oh, also she has lovely sandals. <laughs> you won't be able to see them, but she has lovely sandals. Matt has that go-to look with the, you know, like he's biking and stuff. So he's another nature. In fact, they match your artwork, if you know. They do. Their they do. Really. Match the artwork. <laughs> so, yes, there are people in, the, in here with us, it's, and we do enjoy what we do. And uh, it seems like we're at a close. Um, any other word of inspiration? Uh, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Um, I always end my shows with assalamu alaikum, which means peace be to you. And with this show, you really will feel peace today. So watch it, come in, take a look. There'll be a reception. Ask for Crystal and Matt so you can see who I was talking about. And um, oh, he's hiding and she's like, yeah, yeah. So, um, and I want to thank them for being a patient camera crew and helping us and passing the work. And um, have a very good show. You will.
Thank you. Okay, Somerville, you know what this means. Get out your brushes, get out your paints. Now, plunge into it. Get those canvases, go down to the store. I don't care what it is. Uh, paint and paint and draw and draw and dance if you want. Do whatever you <laughs> want to do, but get the energy going. That's the important thing. That's how I want to be remembered. The person that told you to get out there and do something creative. So, okay, I said it before. Peace be to you, but drum it up a bit. <laughs> Paint, raw, and everything else. Thank you. See you next month. Bye.